So the right has really ramped up their anti-trans rhetoric. Uh, you had Michael Knowles, the Daily Wire third stringer, on stage at CPAC saying we need to, quote, eradicate transgenderism. And then he got into a big fight with the media because Rolling Stone had a headline that said he wants to eradicate trans people. And he says, no, no, I didn't say eradicate trans people. This is libelous. I said eradicate transgenderism. Okay, well, what's the difference there, fella? Even in my kindest interpretation of eradicate transgenderism, that means what? Nobody's ever allowed to talk about trans issues ever again? It's an attempt to try to force people who are trans back into the closet. Don't give them the help they need. Don't give them the support they need, which would increase suicide rates, etc. Not give them the treatment. Like, what are you saying? Okay, you're saying you don't want to retroactively get rid of all trans people. Oh, how kind. But from here on out, let's try to... Don't discuss it. Don't try to act like it doesn't exist. And then maybe it'll go away. Hopefully it'll go away. So either way, you want to reduce it or stop it from here on out. There is no intelligent reading of that, right? So that happened. By the way, one of his defenses was like, I can't be saying anything genocidal because I don't even think trans people exist. Very good defense. <laughs> Very good defense. Very convincing. Okay, so uh, Matt Walsh, he's the famous guy who's obsessed with trans issues. I mean, he wakes up with transgender folks on the mind. He, he can't get them out of his head. Um, he very famously in a Twitter exchange said he thinks the surgery should be banned for everybody. Like no doctor should be allowed to perform a transition surgery. Guys, remember they used to pretend it was about kids. Like, oh no, we just don't want a four year old getting transition surgery. That's all. That's it, bro. That's it. And then they kept moving the goalposts and moving the goalposts and moving the goalposts. And eventually the mask slipped and they said, yeah, no, nobody should be able to get uh, trans healthcare. Nobody. <laughs> okay. So now here we are, uh, Shocking, he's talking about trans people again. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so uh, listen to what he has to say now. Really, it's what you said, the mutilation of the truth, which I like that. I might steal that line. I don't know. I hadn't thought of that yet. Uh, but th to me, that's, that's the starting point, and that is the most important thing. Um, and all the other stuff grows from that root. Once we uh, abandon truth as a society, then... You know, then then all bets are off, and and the whole reason why, you know, the reason why it's terrible to do this to a child, the primary reason, like why is it a why is it a terrible thing to try to turn a fifteen year old girl into a boy? Well, because it's not possible, because she can't she can't be a boy. She's not. So you, that's what makes it mutilation. That's what makes it, it's not medical treatment. It's mutilation, mm -hmm. and the reason why is because it's not true. All right, let me address this for a second. He's, he's pretending, like, I'm just a crusader for the truth, bro. So in other words, he's saying this 15,000 times over. Did you know that boys are boys and girls are girls? Did you know that? Did you know men are men and women are women, bro? Did you know that? Pfft, I'm here to just drop knowledge on everybody, and boys are boys and girls are girls. So if you think that boys are not boys and girls are not girls, bro, you got another thing coming, because boys are boys. And girls are girls. Oh, oh, you're so fucking smart, dude. How'd you figure that out? You were able to deduce that? The boys are boys and girls. Are you able to figure that out? Wow. Oh, so this is a war on truth, isn't it? Here's the problem with that. You are disregarding another giant aspect of the truth. So yeah, of course, if somebody's biologically male, they're biologically male. If they're biologically female, they're biologically female. That's why there's a distinction between sex and gender. Gender is the outward expression of who you are. Sex is what you are biologically. Nobody's saying a biological male becomes a biological woman or a biological woman becomes a biological male. They're saying their gender expression, not their sex expression, their gender expression. Uh, you know, somebody who was born biologically male can be female. Somebody who was born biologically female can be male. So, you know, oh, I'm all about the truth, all about the truth, all about the truth. Well, how's this for some truth? There are some people who are born in one body and they have the overwhelming, all-consuming thought and belief that I'm born in the wrong body. This ain't right. I'm the other thing. That also is real. Now, oh, Mr. I'm Team Truth. You're disregarding that entire real phenomenon which has existed throughout all of recorded history. If you cared so much about truth, you would acknowledge there are many people, the overwhelming majority of people, are like, yeah, I was born male, and I feel male. So me, my sex is male, uh, my biological sex is male, but my gender expression is male. That's most people. Most people. They match up with how they were born. But there's some people who just don't. Why are you pretending like that's not a thing? Why are you pretending like that doesn't exist? 
ironically, you're the one waging the war on truth. Because when you come out and say, even adults shouldn't be able to get the surgery, which you did say in a Twitter exchange, you're the one waging war on truth because you're saying this person can't be true to themselves, even as an adult. So, truth, spare me. Oh yeah, I'm so concerned about truth. Which is why I'm on the Daily Wire network with Ben Shapiro. Yeah, that crusader for the truth. He's totally not just a partisan hack. He definitely doesn't sell mugs that say leftist tears on it. And he's obsessed with triggering the libs all day. No, you guys are uh, crusaders for truth. I know, I know. Um, so I think that's, that's the starting point for me. It's just like, this is not true. It's not true, and that's, and that's why it matters. Um, the thing that makes it really personal for me is, is the way that kids are affected by it. I have six kids, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they are, we homeschool them, and we do, my oldest kids are nine, so it's still relatively easy to shield them from a lot of this craziness. But eventually they're going to end up in the world and they're going to be subjected to this. And I, I hear from parents. Uh, remember when Matt Walsh was on Joe Rogan's show and he said that millions of kids are doing some sort of trans treatment, whether it was hormones or puberty blockers or whatever. He said millions. And then they looked it up and I think the number was 4,000 <laughs> or 5,000 total. Remember that? That, that wanton and brazen disregard for the truth is something you should keep in mind. This guy's an ideologue, first and foremost. He's working backwards from his conclusions, and it's very clear. The idea what? Uh, you know, everybody's so concerned if they have kids. Oh, little Bobby's going to come home tomorrow and say, I'm Jennifer. <laughs> There's a scourge sweeping the country. What are we at now? 70% of our youth have now come out as trans. Like, what, 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 are you, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? all the time just these horror stories of you know i raised my kid i did everything right i even homeschooled i did whatever and then uh one day my daughter at 16 comes home and declares that she's a boy and from that moment it's just she is devoured by this cult almost overnight and again what percentage of the population would that be is the first question what percentage of the population is at a young age saying actually i'm the opposite gender what percentage is this a scourge that is sweeping the nation even if the number is going up, which, by the way, it is, you could argue, just like with gay people, we used to force them into the closet. Then when society finally let their boot off the neck of gay people a little bit, more people came out. Exact same history with left-handedness. There's a great chart which shows, back in the day, only a tiny percentage were left-handed. It was very small. And still, it's a minority of people, but the number went up. Why? Because after a while, people were like, why would we stop people from wanting to, if that's the hand they're better with, just let them, let them do that. Same thing with gay people. Now, the same thing with trans people. He thinks it's a scourge, and most importantly, he thinks it's fake. He thinks it's fake. Dude, I got news for you. In the overwhelming majority of cases, I think it's literally 99%, thereabouts, uh, nobody's gonna willy-nilly casually like, yeah, I'm gonna change everything about my outward uh, appearance and become the opposite gender. Yeah, that's something I wanna do. Take drugs and change my hormone levels, and when they're older, get a, a, you know, an actual surgery. When they're younger, by the way, they don't do bottom surgery, right? But when they're older, you know, get a surgery. I'm going to do that all willy-nilly, you know? It's like waking up one day and choosing to wear blue versus yellow. Like, yeah, I, you know, I'll just, I'll just wear that. That's what people do. Like, yeah, I'll just get rid of my dick and balls on a whim. Just, this is so, such idiotic thinking. Comes unrecognizable. She wants nothing to do with us anymore. I've heard the story so many times. Mm. Um, and it's terrifying. It's horrific. Mm. You know, it's, uh, I think as a parent, it's like a fate worse than death mm. in a lot of ways. You're, you're losing your child. <laughs> it's like a death of a child while they're still alive. And um, so that, that's what makes it, I suppose. It's like, a, it's like a fate worse than death if your kid is trans, according to Matt Walsh. A fate worse than death. There's plenty of people who said in the past and still say today, although it's a smaller number today, it's a fate worse than death if my kid is gay the problem is not the kid dude the problem is you the problem is you in some very small percentage of cases you have people who regret it and they want to detransition and by the way god bless anybody who attacks somebody who detransitions don't because you know if they actually hey no i made the wrong choice I'm gonna go. okay good fine but that's a tiny percentage right and people should be able to express who they are full stop as long as you're not hurting anybody else and these people aren't hurting anybody else and you would rather have, you know, it's a fate worse than death for your kid to be trans. I feel terrible for his kids. Because this is indicative of a broader mindset of like, 
the way he'll be in other ways too, right? If he if they don't fit the mold that he's made for them in his mind, he's going to be very strict, very angry, a very dismissive of their own personal wants and needs and concerns and, and vision for the future. And you know, that's it's rough, man. That's rough. All right, there you have it. Shocking. Another day that Matt Walsh is obsessed with trans people. By the way, I like I never talked about this issue. But now I feel so compelled to because all every day you're seeing a new thing like, you know, there eradicate transgenderism or right wingers letting it all hang out that they really are leaning into this anti trans rhetoric. And by the way, it was not always like this. Now, for a long time, I feel like maybe trans people flew under the radar politically. I'm sure they always dealt with discrimination and various issues, employment issues, etc. I'm sure of it. But um, in terms of, like, the right leaning into this sort of openly anti-trans rhetoric, it wasn't always like this. In fact, this is the godfather of uh, right-wing political commentary, Pat Robertson. And fundamentalist Christian, huge show for a very long time. Listen to what he said. He says, I work with two people who have decided that they are females. I know what the Bible says about homosexuality, but is it wrong to refer to them as females since they've had their gender status changed in the eyes of the law? Uh, Why would you have to refer to them as females? I don't understand all that, but uh, I think there are uh, men who are in a woman's body. Mm-hmm. It's very rare, but it's true. Or women that are in men's bodies, and uh, they 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 want a, a sex change, and that is a very permanent thing. Believe me, when you have certain body parts uh, amputated uh, and you have shot up with various kinds of hormones, uh, it's a it's a radical procedure. Uh, I, I don't think there's any sin associated with that. I, I don't. Wasn't always like this. It's getting worse. So not saying Pat Robertson is exactly the best source of anything ever, but it does illustrate an important point, which is this is a new wave of this stuff that we haven't seen, certainly in recent history. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.